Oh, man. You remember the day when wrestling used to push the envelope? When wrestling actually was cool? When wrestling would sometimes anger fans? When wrestling would sometimes piss people off? Piss the media off? And in some ways now, it does that more than ever. <laughs> but it doesn't quite have the same resonance. It doesn't quite click and connect the exact same. And I think a perfect example of that to me is when I look at the whole hubbub and hullabaloo from this past week with Max Caster's rap for AEW on whatever the hell show it is they do on YouTube. Was that dark? I don't give a crap. Anyways, he comes out and he starts spitting that hot fire Throwing down some bars, talking about Simone Biles and mental health, talking about Duke Lacrosse and rape, and talking about a 19 year old and her smelly VJJ. And as you could imagine, in this ultra sensitive, pussified world, that all three of those lines elicited some type of outrage. Now look. First thing I would do is knowing the landscape and climate that we are in, I would criticize Tony Khan for this more than I would Max Caster, and here's why. If it's got your name attached to it, which is just, if it's AEW, Tony Khan has got your name attached to it, like, how do you not know what the hell's going on? How in the hell do you sit there and allow this to be aired? Like, it doesn't matter if you go back and you edit it out and change it later. Like It's already happened. The damage has already been done. Now, of course, you ultimately, being the copyright cucks, will sit there and go try to strike down with a face of vengeance and defiance against anybody that may actually bother to tweet out the clip, which is a whole bigger censorship problem, which I would expect from somebody like the Khan family. But how the hell did that even air? Like, you have to know, even if it's close, don't air it. This goes back to the shit with Cornette's dumbass joke a couple of years back, and it was all the rage about Cornette and his stupidity, all the while leaving out the stupidity of, oh, isn't it, Lagana and Corgan? Like, how the hell did you let that air? Like, you had chance to prepare and edit and put this through production and so forth, and instead you just let it air. Like... Where's the critical thinking here? I guess we're talking about professional wrestling. So that is something when you talk about critical thinking that is certainly lacking a lot of times. Now as far as Max Caster and the choice of lyrics, eh. Like if I want to be me for a second, I'll be a bit of a penis, sure, and I don't give a shit if you like it or not. The Simone Biles line, it's relevant, it's timely. Like, okay, you know, let's stop pretending this was 100% a mental health thing. This was somebody who was called the goat for a couple of years who bought into her own bullshit, even having the goat symbol, you know, a picture of a goat stitched onto her damn USA singlet. Like she bought into that until she wasn't performing like the goat. And then all of a sudden she crumbled under the pressure because she got the twisties. She quit on her team during the, the team competition which is absolutely the right call to make for the team, was absolutely the right call to make for herself personally from a health standpoint because of the type of intense, powerful shit that Simone Biles is capable of doing. If she continued to go out there, she could have really messed herself up. So not an easy decision to make. She made the right one ultimately. Even though to me it is representative of a larger problem of everybody likes to get pumped up full of smoke and then the first time they face any adversity at all, we've, we've got this really mentally weak climate, admittedly, that we've got that everybody just starts crumbling down. It's just reality. So is that line out of pocket a little bit? Maybe. Does it require the amount of rage tweeting and rage posting that I saw on social media? No. Uh, toughen up a little bit, folks. Seriously. For the second part of it, the Duke lacrosse joke, that really doesn't connect for an entirely different reason that pe people just don't seem to get here. I talk about, oh, you're making a rape joke in 2021. It's not even 
that's not funny at all. Yeah, maybe, maybe it's not. Like, you might have a point there. But even here, I would look at Max Caster and I would say just more from, like, a historical accuracy standpoint. Like, what the fuck was the point of that? If you don't remember the Duke Lacrosse case, that was where the exotic dancer accused the three white dudes at the Duke fraternity of rape. And then later on, it was found out that there was gross mis uh, misconduct by the prosecutor, Mike Nifong, who was trying to win an election in Durham. So he thought this was going to really help him to the point where he was disbarred and later served one whole whopping day in jail. That white privilege paid off for him somehow. But he was disbarred in part because of his conduct and the way that he conducted this and created this witch hunt. For this very untrustworthy accuser, by the way, who not once but twice <laughs> has been accused of other violent crimes, ultimately convicted of, and I believe to this day, is still serving a long prison sentence for attempted murder. The point I'm getting at here is, it's not even really a fucking rape joke, because I think it's been largely established over a decade and a half later that those were 100% false allegations, or at least not provable in any way allegations. Like, it was bullshit. And the prosecutor went along with that. So he's sitting there talking about it being some type of rape joke, but it's not even a rape joke. It's a fucking prosecutorial misconduct joke. Like, it's stupid. So I would agree in this sense that it was in poor taste. You probably shouldn't be rapping about anything rape-related in 2021, Max Castor. That's fucking dumb. Number two, you look like a fucking idiot because you're sitting there and using Duke Lacrosse as a lyric in one way when it represents and means something entirely different, you dumbass. And then to the third part, and this is the big one. This is the one, yeah, white guy talking, so fucking here we go. Especially the guy part talking. What fascinates me about this bullshit, when you're talking about, I can't believe he was insinuating their vagina stunk when she was all of 19 years old. Yet she would be the same type of 19 year old that if she was so inclined, as a legal adult, more power to her if that's what she chooses to do, so let's be clear. But she can sit there and be posting all types of thirst traps on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook and every fucking thing else. She could be appearing in bikini magazines and all this other shit. She could sit there and open up an OnlyFans account and be a contact create, content creator and provider because she's 18 or older. But this guy referencing her smelly vajayjay is a fucking problem. To which some of you are going to say, well, this is like it's sexual harassment and blah, 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 blah. Really? Really? Like, good Christ almighty. At what point in time do we stop finding reasons to complain about every damn thing? At what point in time do we stop finding reasons to be pissed off about everything because our lives aren't going the way we exactly envision them to. So that way I got to rage and be a pussy about every damn thing. And that's exactly what the hell this is. Bunch of wusses. Do I think the Max Caster rap was pretty stupid? Yes. In particular, I just talked about how the second part was incredibly ignorant. Not only rape joking in 2021, dumb, not even having his facts straight for the example that he's fucking using. Like, that deserves to get him open-handed pimp slapped by somebody backstage in AEW as it is. The Simone Biles thing, though? My God. Is that what we're coming down to in our society? Is that every time anybody faces any obstacles, every time anybody faces any type of challenges or something doesn't exactly go their way 100%. We're going to cry mental health wee, 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 all the way freaking home. Get the hell over it. We all, every single one of us, myself included, have some type of mental health challenge. Like, let's be clear, when we're talking about human beings, we're a bunch of messed up creatures individually and collectively as a species. We battle anxiety, depression, Lack of self-esteem. You know, any number of damn things. Like, we can't always use that as a crutch, and we can't always run from that. And, oh, this stigma that's attached, there's stigmas attached with everything. Get the hell over it. And as far as the whole thing of, how dare you make fun of her? She gonna be just fine, I promise you. If anything, there's an 
unexpected potential positive of, we might be able to see the GOAT Simone Biles in Paris in three years at the Olympics again because she might feel like she has some unfinished business. That if the Olympics had went the way they normally would have expected them to go, maybe we wouldn't have gotten that. So you could take a negative and turn it into a huge positive. Like, yeah, she quit on her team in that moment. It was absolutely the right decision for her to make. The root cause of the problem was she wasn't performing at her best and she's at a point where it could have potentially caused her some real long-term physical damage. So I completely support her decision not to. It was absolutely the best thing for her to do for that team in the moment because they didn't need to sit there and have her stinking up the joint and they didn't need to sit there and have her run the risk of injury. And she didn't need to be stinking up the team. She didn't need to be stinking up the joint and potentially ruining you know, her standard of living post-gymnastics. You know, it doesn't always have to be so cut and dry. It doesn't always have to be so black and white. You can have a lot of gray space here. You can say, this can be true, and then also this can be true. But when I sit there and I look at this, and we talk about that, something like that is like the same type of mental health thing as somebody that's depressed, is paranoid, schizophrenic, is suicidal, and those type of things. Like, stop that shit! It's not the same. It is not the same. And we need to stop pumping that up on a pedestal and be like, oh, look at all that she had to overcome. Well, part of it, in part, was a monster of her own creation. And I feel incredibly bad for some of these athletes that are put into this spot because the pressure on them is immense. And it could be too much to deal with at some time. And sure, you might not always want to hear somebody like a Max Caster making a joke about it, but the shit is out there. Like, I wouldn't be mad at anybody be mad at Tony Khan or somebody backstage for not better vetting what Caster was going to say in his rap. Be mad at them as well for allowing this shit to air. Do I think Max Caster necessarily used the best judgment here? No. But what I find interesting about all of this is the same folks that are going to rage about this will be the ones that sit there and talk about, I can't believe you're sitting there talking about a 19-year-old Smelly JJ, but they'll celebrate seeing somebody like Mike Tyson, a convicted fucking rapist. Or Stone Cold Steve Austin and a convicted woman beater. And you're going to say, well, that's a what about ism or that's a straw man argument. No, it's really not. Because I find the hypocrisy of the selective outrage to be outstanding here. And there are numerous examples of that. And even when you look within AEW, you're going to sit there and shit on a guy like Max Caster. But you sit there and praise some of these fools that are sitting there and still friends with somebody like a Joey Ryan. AEW allowing some of their talents initially to be booked on a Joey Ryan show. Joey Ryan is scuzz and a piece of shit and everybody knows that. To the whole thing where some of them are still friends with, isn't it a convicted uh, sex offender like Chase and Rance? Like, aren't some of those AEW guys friends with him? Like, where's the outrage about that? Even when you talk about some of the allegations leveled, levied against a guy like Darby Allen, It's amazing how much of the AEW fan base is silent about that. But a Max Caster goes out there and he raps about a couple of things that are probably in poor taste. I don't fully disagree with that. Everybody's raging about that shit. If one of those things is going to outrage you, then all of them should outrage you. Right? Like, how dare you sit there and have such selective outrage because, well, that's one of my favorites, though. I like, I'm okay with him, so I'm going to completely pretend like that doesn't exist. I'm going to completely freaking ignore that. It's unbelievable to me. Like, just exposed to me, if nothing else, the hypocrisy that continues to exist in terms of the wrestling bubble. It points to the fact of somebody like a Max Caster that we can't come up with more original lyrics or more original bars or verses to try and get ourselves over. You know, we got to go with the cheap shit because most of these wrestlers now are not real talents. They're wannabes and fakes. It speaks to just how incredibly emotional and overly sensitive fans are today and the society is as a whole. I got crap on everybody for this. Like it was one rap on an insignificant AEW show and it was like the internet was ablaze. But yay, my Tyson. Damn right, man. <laughs>